Hey, it's Jess with Hardcore Carnivore here in Austin, Texas, and I've partnered with King's Food as part of the weekly virtual smokehouse tour, and today we're gonna show you how to grill up something tasty in your own backyard. On the menu today, we have Tex-Mex tacos. I'm gonna be using flank steak, but you could also use skirt steak or flap steak or bavette steak as well. Any of those work great and we're gonna be making a fire roasted salsa. It's really good enough to eat on its own, but it's even better when you spoon it over tacos. Here in Texas, Tex-Mex is such a huge part of our cuisine, and basically it's a melding of Texas-style grilling and cheese with classic Mexican ingredients. Let's get started with the fire roasted salsa. We're gonna be using Roma tomatoes, jalapenos, you could use serranos if you want a little more fire or heat there, uh, a white onion and a poblano pepper. Again, you can just use more jalapenos if you want. It's basically just a combo of the jalapenos and the tomatoes and the onion. Now the first step is to get them onto the grill and get them nice and charred up and softened. And once we have the color that we want, then we're gonna throw everything in a blender and blitz it with a little lime juice and salt to make our fire roasted salsa. Let's get started. Time to fire up the grill and I'm using the Masterbuilt 560 gravity fed smoker. I'm gonna fill it with Kingsford original briquettes and that way I get that great flavor from charcoal and this thing can get up to 700 degrees to see it. All right, we're latched up. Let's fire it up to about 350 degrees to start to get our fire roasted veggies going. Once my veggies are at the color I want them to be, I'll go ahead and let them soften a little bit in there. So maybe it's gonna be 10 to 15 minutes all together. Then I'm gonna take them, throw them into a blender, add a little lime juice and salt and blitz them up. It's gonna taste amazing. While my veggies are finishing, I'm gonna get started on the steak. So I'm using flank steak today. Now for seasoning, I'm gonna be using hardcore carnivore michelada, which is a chili lime. It's perfect for tacos. You could use any fajita style seasoning that you like. So with flank steak, you can see there's a really pronounced grain running the whole way through. And it is a little bit tougher, but there's a ton of flavor here. It doesn't matter because we're gonna cut this into bite-sized pieces for our tacos. So they're gonna be pretty tender by the time we're done with them. I'm gonna put my steak onto a board and then I'm gonna season liberally with my seasoning here. If you wanted to make it yourself, you could just use some chili powders, salt, cumin, garlic, onion, all those great flavors. But just make sure that your meat is well coated because seasoning loves meat and meat without seasoning just doesn't taste the same. I'm gonna let that sit for at least 15 minutes while my veggies are getting ready so that it can soak up all of that seasoning right before I throw it on the grill. So my veggies are nice and soft. They've got a beautiful char on them, but you do have to de-stem and de-seed the chilies. It's as simple as cutting that stem off, cutting them open, and just scraping out the seeds. Ooh, they're still hot from the grill. Um, if you like it spicier, you can leave the seeds in. Then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is put everything in a blender. Woo, slippery. Everything goes into a blender and we're gonna blitz it all up. I've blitzed up all my ingredients and you can see I've got this gorgeous salsa here with little flecks of the fire roasting. Now that the salsa is done, it's time to cook the meat. I've just cranked the grill up to 600 degrees and the plan is I'm gonna put the meat on, I'm gonna sear it on both sides at that really high heat and then I'm gonna turn the grill back down and that's one of the advantages of this master built. You can actually turn it up and down, which you can't do with traditional grills. But I'm gonna turn it back down to about 375 and let that flank steak finish cooking the whole way through until it's about 135 degrees internal temperature, which should give me perfect medium rare. So let's get these on and searing. This is a really quick sear. It's been about 45 seconds and I'm gonna flip it and then do the other side and then turn my heat down. And the idea of that is getting that really, really nice crust on the flank steak, but then giving it a really gentle heat to cook the whole way through so it's not too rare in the middle, but not too burnt on the outside. So 
So now the flank steak is seared on both sides. I'm gonna turn it down to about 375 and let it finish cooking. I'm gonna go ahead and get some avocado ready for a topping. You can pretty much put in anything that you like. Cilantro, you can use sour cream, which is super Tex-Mex. The nice part about this is that all of these ingredients are super easy to source. You can actually get these and the grill at your local Walmart, but it's just really nice to do something so simple that has such a big flavor punch. While I'm waiting for my steak to be done, I just wanted to tell you a little tip on searing, especially when you're using charcoal. Now, some folks think that searing locks in the flavors and locks in the juices, and I'm sorry to tell you that's not exactly correct. Now, what searing does do is promote what we call the Maillard reaction, which is an amazing reaction that happens. It's an enzymatic reaction when you have reducing sugars and amino acids. And I know that sounds kind of complicated, but all you need to worry about is the Maillard is the thing that's responsible for that amazing brown crispy crust that we get on steaks when we sear them. So that's what we're looking for when we sear hot at that 600 degrees. And then again, we're using that lower temperature, that 375, to make sure that steak is cooked exactly how we want internally while we still have that amazing Maillard on the outside. So it's time to test the internal temperature of my steak and I'm just using a meat thermometer which is going to give me a really precise result instead of just guessing where I think it's at. So I can see it's exactly where I want it to be. It's between 135 and 140 which is going to put it at a perfect medium rare which is perfect for this flank steak. I'm going to take this off the grill, put it onto a board and rest it under foil for about 10 minutes. Now the resting is really important because it means that it'll allow all those juices to stay inside your steak instead of running all over your board. So don't skip the rest. Plus we have tortillas to warm up. So our grill is still on, our meat is resting, our salsa is made, and I have some tortillas here. Uh, these ones are actually a mix of flour and corn, which are very unique to Texas. It's called a mixed up, but you can use corn, you can use flour, whatever kind of tortillas you like. But tortillas are infinitely better when they're warm. So we're still gonna use our warm grill to warm these up. I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna make like a little pouch out of foil because Generally, when you go ahead and warm your tortillas up, you're not gonna do them as you're ready to eat. So I find warming them up and putting them in just a piece of foil will keep them the perfect temperature until your steak's ready to cut and you're ready to cook everything. It's time to cut into our rested steak. Let's see how we did. I'm going straight down the middle to check. Oh, that's beautiful. You can see all of our juices are staying in the steak instead of on the board because we did that rest. Now, all I have to do is cut this into bite-sized pieces because even though I'm cutting it against the grain, which is awesome and it means it'll taste more tender when you eat it, the grain's running this way and that's why I'm cutting that way. If I cut it into bite-sized pieces, it's just gonna be easier to eat in the taco. Now that all our elements are ready, it's time to assemble the tacos. I'm gonna take one of our warm tortillas and then just grab a handful of this gorgeous flank steak. See how it's nice and easy to eat in these bite-sized pieces? I'm gonna put in some avocado, and then of course, I have to spoon over that beautiful fire-roasted salsa. But I did promise you that these were gonna be Tex-Mex tacos, and nothing says Tex-Mex quite like the addition of cheese. So to finish them off, a big sprinkling of cheese. And there you have it. Here from my kitchen in Austin, Texas, these are my Tex-Mex grilled blank steak tacos with fire roasted salsa. I hope y'all enjoyed and learned something new today. I gotta go and eat this taco. <laughs>